Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the GRS Berserk stock. This has been sent out to me for a quick test and a little review. And uh, it's holding up pretty good. So we're going to go through the, um, the different parts of it, the different features, what it's made out of, and give it a review. So see you in a minute. So here in front of me is the GRS Berserk stock. Anyone who's used to seeing the uh, GRS uh, chassis or stock line um, will recognize it straight away from the uh, quick adjust um, cheek height and uh, length, length of pull, which uh, good and solid. Um, but uh, let's get a bit more into it. The stock itself is uh, made from duratane or duraton um, uh, polymer, which is uh, bound with 15% fiberglass resin which gives it a nice, um, it doesn't actually feel like plastic. Um, it, it's not, if you felt it, it doesn't feel like the, like for example, the Remington or the Tika standard stocks, they, they feel like plastic. This feels harder. Um, it's got a lighter tone to it when you tap it. It actually sounds more like a dull fiberglass stock. Um, in that saying, it does have two pillars, which I'll show you in a few minutes inside which support the rifle when it's under its 45 inch pounds of torque. And they're made of 65% glass and duratane. And um, they do a pretty good job of uh, keeping it bedded on those two points and keeping the barrel floated. And um, for a plastic type stock, it really does, keeps a lot of the pressure away from the barrel. So different, different bipod pressures don't affect this like it does your standard plastic stocks like your SPSs or the Teak environments or whatever you want to put on there or your long wooden stocks um, and even in some cases the laminate stocks um, if they don't have a good uh, a good um, clearance from the barrel or back here at the back uh, can cause a lot of issues but this is for my uh, barrel which is um, M24 profile which is very similar to the Remington Varman profile is um, there's loads of room each side of it you could almost Stick a bull barrel in this, a straight taper, but not quite. Um, you can go a bit more than this. You might stick a, you'll probably stick a medium palma, maybe a bit more, um, without doing too much fiddling. But um, for this size, which would be close enough to your Remington heavy environment, great, no modification needed. Um, so pretty much this is what it looks like. The ergonomics of it are great, well thought out. Um, GRS have done this type of stock for a long time, and they're good at the ergonomics. Um, now, I have a problem with the majority of stocks when I go to use them is I have small hands. Um, so when I try to get to the trigger, I cannot get the tip of my finger 90 degrees to my trigger blade. And this trigger blade is very far back, being the DCR trigger is positioned really well, but I still can't do it if I grab this pistol size. Now, if I was to just float my thumb, no problem. It's absolutely perfect for me in that case. And... Um, it is actually comfortable to float with this chassis because of this rubber finish they have on the forend and on the pistol grip. Um, and it being canted out to the side slightly, it gives you a lot to, uh, it gives you a lot to purchase your hand on. Um, it makes it very easy if you're used to floating your hand or you have smaller hands like me to pull a shot, even with this, um, with this bigger pistol type pistol grip. But um, as I said, I'm on the, the, the one extreme where my hands are too small. I've had lads use this with much, much bigger hands um, that were not able to use the pistol grip on my AI properly because their hands were so big. They were very comfortable in this and lads whose hands were just slightly bigger than mine, no problem. So if your hands are on the small side, you might have to float to get a perfect trigger, uh, but um, the majority of lads out there will have absolutely no trouble with this. Uh, we have your cheek here at the back, which you can pull out. On the ergonomic side, it's nice and rounded on one side. It's that duratane again. It's not, um, it's kind of, uh, oh, I wouldn't say knurled, but there's a rough finish on it to give you a better purchase with your cheek. Um, it does the job fine. I'd like to see, if I could, I'd like to see it going a bit higher because it's just a little bit too low for me um, with these high rings. Now I could probably go down to mediums, but it'd still be a little bit low uh, in my case. Now, moving up the gun, uh, the floor plate is in. This is just the normal SPS floor plate or the Remington floor plate. Went in easy enough. Um, you could get a box mag to work in this with AI mags or whatever you want. If you had the floor plate, it might require some smith work just to get everything lined up properly, but 
there's no reason why not. Uh, going up to the front, and you'll see in a second, uh, there's a lot of space inside here, and there's a good structure. Um, it's not just straight walls and straight bottom, it's, it's, um, it's oval shaped, where they've um, made it as light as possible. Now, when I'm saying as light as possible, I put the proper weight up here, but when I have this in my normal build, instead of my AI chassis, I'm only saving half a pound. So it's not a super lightweight chassis. It's got some good proper heft to it. It's, it's a beefy chassis, um, which is totally fine with me. I have no problem with that. And if we look over here, GRS actually supply, which I like to see, are some flush cups. One on the rear, one on the side. And they're on the side opposite the bolt, so you don't have the bolt sticking into your back as you're walking. You do sling it. Um, I found with the bipod on, it was sticking into me a bit. When you take that bipod off, it sits flat against your back and there's no issues on it at all. Or if you have a, one of the lighter stalking bipods, again, you'll have no issues. Um, the flush cups themselves are very well anchored. Uh, the front one actually goes on a bar straight across, same with the back one. They're anchored in there. I gave them a good bit of effort uh, yesterday and I couldn't get them to mudge, budge. And I could not get it to unanchor at the point. It does come with a set of... Um, quick detach uh, clips here and they do seem to be very solid I don't know what brand or manufacturer they are the ones that I have in mind are a set of Magpul um, mil spec ones and for the life of me I don't know why you would buy a cheap set of these um, not saying that these are cheap but you really want to test them out because you don't want to be walking and all of a sudden you drop your 18 pound rifle on top of its scope and that's it done for a season um, if you do use flush cups, don't um, be afraid to test when you have it anchored in. You should not be able to pull that out and um, never ever buy a cheap set of these. But these seem to be fairly solid. I couldn't pull them out, but it just happens that I have magpuls on my sling and they do a really good job as well. So it just does come with two of those. So if you wanted to restitch or in the case of uh, this Armageddon sling, you can uh, just unwrap your sling and change the ends on it if you wanted to use the old QDs or if you want to use the flush cups. Uh, but I do like to see flush cups on these. This does not have a rear um, QD sling, like the bipod adapter. So uh, you won't be using your standard Uncle Mike's QD or whatever you normally use to connect in. Uh, you'll have to um, put one of these into the sling to uh, connect to the, uh, the back. You can leave the front one on because you can always use your bipod or if you're not using a bipod, you can use the anchor for the bipod for your front one. But um, it's a good idea to get these onto a sling because then you can keep it flat against your back and you're not going to have any issues. So I'm going to do now, I'm just going to tear this down and come back to you. Okay, it's all stripped down here in front of me and you can see the, the bare stop the way it is. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through the inside of it and uh, go through the, the different uh, parts. It, it'll be different on each model. I mean, they make these for, I think it's all Tikas. They don't make them for Seikos, which is a bit strange. Uh, they only make them on right-hand side, which is, well, obviously because it's an injected molded process, it's not a milling machine that you can just turn backwards. Um, they do it on, uh, what are they called? I think they do it on Savage, and there's one more, uh, oh, Hawa. So Hawa type action sets, whether it be Hawa, RWS, uh, they do savage actions, Remington long and short, and um, all oh, the Tikas as well. So uh, each of them will be slightly different on the insert, but I'm just going to give you a quick look at how the pillars are set up in a Remington. And um, it might give you a quick idea of how they uh, try to get the much, as much accuracy as they can out of this um, by uh, setting it up on pillars. At the back, you can see this pillar here, and you can see that it's raised. It's raised about two thousandths up an inch maybe one tau and um, it just means that when it's tightened down there's no pressure transfer to the actual duratane stock it's all in the 65 percent pillar now as you travel up here you can just see the uh, well that's standard duratane all the way up here to the next one and same thing it's up about a tau off the rifle so all the pressure is transferred to the pillar and not to the stock um, Traveling up the channel here, you got the recoil lug reset. Now I've got a pretty big recoil lug on mine. It's not the standard one anymore. And uh, it fit no problem into this. And there's plenty more room. It's actually pretty close to the size of an Accuracy International um, chassis system, uh, recoil lug reset. So it'll, it'll accommodate just about everything. Going up inside then we have, um, as I said, the, uh, the milled out inside to make it a bit lighter. We have the cross support for the... Um, the 
2D and move up to the channel here. So pretty much it's the same as just about any other stock except for these pillars. So I'll flip it over here. You can see how it works in the bottom. So over here on the bottom, you can see again the pillar and that's raised again about a tau uh, off the, uh, the rest of the stock. Same with the back one here, it's about a tau up. Now, these are fixed solid epoxy to the rest of the stock. So the stock doesn't slip around them in any way. So these two pillars are raised up from the, uh, the stock itself, top and bottom. Um, so that once you put that uh, action in there and you get it down to 45 inch pounds, um, it doesn't interact with the 15% duratane at all. It's only interacting with the much, much stronger uh, 65%, which really does actually feel like fiberglass to the to the touch. You can't mark it with your fingernail or anything like that. You need a pretty good tool. Um, and that's where the accuracy comes from with this guy. When you pull the trigger, it makes it do as close to possible the same thing every single time. Um, the, uh, the pillars themselves, as I said, are locked in. They're not going to move. And what that helps with is the free float. Now, when you look at it uh, and you see a little bit of flex, you're like, oh, I don't know about that flexing. But um, what's actually flexing is the 15% duratane. It doesn't actually flex and transfer much into the pillars because once they're clamped down, they're a separate entity to the stock. The stock is sitting in them but it's almost floated off it. It's only held in there really um, just because of the, the curve or in the case of the, um, the tikas and the, uh, and the uh, howas, the, the flat surface. Um, all of the recoil, all of the pressure, all of everything is transferred through these two pillars to the bottom metal, which is sandwiched everything in between, giving you the most consistent surface possible when it comes to not having an aluminium to steel uh, bedding block like the V blocks used in Accent International and such other ones. Um, they kept it, they could have upgraded these to metal, but they'd have to raise the price. Keeping them at 65% duratane uh, really drops down the price. And the retail for this stock, I think, retails between something like 450 euro to slightly over 500 euro, um, depending on where you get it from. You can find these just about anywhere. Um, online and I think even in America they're starting to uh, appear now and um, for the value for the amount you pay for this stock I don't I know you in Europe you cannot get anything with the amount of features with the uh, length of pull the just adjustable cheek decent pillars uh, the ability to fit a box mag uh, flush cups uh, the ergonomics of it there's nothing that comes close to it in Europe Maybe in America, because you don't have to pay the import fee that we have to pay when we get um, chassis in. But um, at the moment, it's pretty untouchable in its price point. And that doesn't matter if it cannot shoot. So what I'm going to show you now is a video showing the, uh, the initial five shots. And then I'll show you what happens when you put different pressure on the bipod.
So, um, it was just put into the chassis, just torqued down. Because it isn't um, an aluminium V-block, you have to take a couple of shots for it to settle into the action. But once it's settled there and you just retorque those to make sure they're still at 45, that's not going to move. So the first couple of shots ran a line and then there's three shots after that that pretty much went in the same hole. Now, this in a AI chassis shoots pretty much quarter M away at 100. Um, I was shooting slightly more, maybe a third M away with this. But then again, you're talking for that a little bit extra MOA, you're talking a chassis that's over a thousand versus something that's literally under half the price of it. Um, but the important part that has a lot of hunters and uh, stalkers that ask me about is, is it flexible? Is it gonna mess with the shot? So what I did was, I think was the bottom left target. Um, I took a shot with no pressure on the bipod. I took a shot with normal pressure, just resting against it. And I took a shot with ridiculous pressure. Like I could hardly, I had to push it down as well as forward just to stop from skidding through the grass. Uh, you'd never shoot that hard if you if you could help it in any way. And it still shot slightly over half MOA. Um, it wasn't quite an inch group, but it kept well under an MOA of accuracy shooting silly like that. Um, but if you get used to the shooting position and you uh, practice at it for a while, after, after a box of bullets, you'll be perfectly at home in this little guy. And um, especially for the money that uh, it costs, it's an amazing uh, piece of kit. Ergonomically and ruggedly, it's just, you're not going to break it. It's it's tough. So we could just get on to the down points on this. Um, well, one, is not it's not really a down point because if, if you made it any lighter, you'd have to sacrifice rigidity. Um, it's a little bit, I was expecting it to be a lot lighter than uh, it was than the aluminium um, AI chassis when it was only an entire standard build only half a pound lighter um, but the uh, cheek rest it'd be nice if it came up another inch not a deal breaker in any way actually I don't even know if it's physically possible to come up another inch no it's not really physically possible for this to come up another inch because it would start coming out the bottom of the action again not a deal breaker you can easily put some um, uh, riser pad on this and uh, get it to where you want. Like when I took the shots, you could see I was using a, um, a little uh, fleece hat just to get my extra inch up the top so I could look straight through without having to use any neck tension. So, um, other downsides, well, just about every other stock I use, uh, the pistol grip's a little bit too big for my hand. That's my hand, that's not the pistol grip. If I was going to improve on this, if this was my chassis, what I would do is just as well as having the two pillar beds. I wouldn't bed it because there's not really much room for bedding. It's held pretty snug by the pillars and the walls of the action. But what I would do is I would fill in the recoil lug with a little bit of um, epoxy and maybe just drill out this a little bit just so I get a little bit more in. Just to, um, I don't know, it, it might add a little bit to it. It might not, but that's one thing I'd do. I honestly would not touch the forehand. I think it's built for purpose and it really does uh, what it's designed to do. Um, it is perfectly rigid, um, perfectly rigid enough 
that if you're shooting normal or even slightly lighter heavy you're not going to make a difference to where you're not going to get a shot when you're hunting um it's not made for a target style stock there's nothing wrong with using it for one it's just a little cons inconsistent perhaps for the razor edge accuracy where you'd be using something like um metal pillars and a full um a full uh, car carbon or a full fiberglass or a professionally uh, pillar bedded and bedded uh, action it's a little bit flexible for that just I'm talking out to a thousand but this thing for hunting which is designed for is is pretty hard to uh, poke holes in it's it's solid it's got good grip the uh, the rubber grips a lot of rubber grips when they get wet are uh, squeaky and slippy these keep their grip when they're wet um, because when we're out here no matter what you do you're going to get wet and um, yeah it's it's good it uses aluminium and stainless steel for its um, its attachments so they're not going to interact much and not going to require too much cleaning but if you do have to clean them or dry them off it's a push button to pull them out just give it a quick clean off and you can put them back in again uh, you can get a bigger recoil pad as an option uh, because they use limb savers if you have a bigger recoiling uh, thing like a one mag or seven mag um you can get the option to get the thicker uh, limb savers and they're fantastic i use one on one mag for years and uh, they really do make a difference but the standard short one for anything but a, a massive recoiling light barrel rifle uh, is totally fine um what else can i say about this i'm actually very impressed with it it is solid it's over designed for hunting which is what I really like to see um, there's no point putting research and development time into something that's just going to do it has to be better than designed and this is better than designed 